Hello everyone. Welcome to our channel Neural Hacks with Vasant. Today I'm starting a new course in our channel which is LLM Course Mastery where I'll be covering almost any concept which is related to LLM be it beginner level or advanced level which is state of the art. This is going to be a very big course which will take more than a month to cover. So in this video, I'm going to share about the syllabus which I'll cover in this course and you can let me know what are all the contents you want other than the contents which I have specified in this video. Let's jump into the syllabus now. So here I didn't mention day zero and in day zero what I'll do is I'll give a brief idea about the natural language processing field in basic and what were the things which were before transformers and how those all came you know it will be a brief session on that mostly i'll try to cover that session as day zero in live most probably and day one starts with the course introduction where i'll give a detailed introduction to the course again because this is more about syllabus that will be more about you know you getting to getting to know about the course as an introduction <clears throat> so after that we'll be seeing about the history of transformers so why transformers came into the picture what is it all about we'll be seeing everything related to that once that is done we'll see about the types of transformers which are available over the market and we'll see when you should use each type so basically it will be the types uses okay each type what is the use you get out of it and where you can use it in your real world problems okay that is what we'll be seeing in day one so basically you'll be introduced to the world of transformers in the day one and once that is done the most important paper and the influential paper in the field of natural language processing in my opinion which is attention is all you need paper will be introduced along with explanation as a whole okay but if you want detailed explanation on this paper please refer the transformers video prior to day two all right and in day three we'll be seeing about the tokenizer section so basically uh, in tokenizer what are all the things we'll be covering so we'll be seeing about what is tokenizer why tokenizer is needed um basically what are the types of tokenizer how each type of tokenizer works and when you will use each type of the tokenizer what is the type of tokenizer used currently what is the use of that there are lots of things to cover and that section will be completely dedicated to these kind of contents and that is your day three in day four you'll be having a very in-depth idea of the overall working of gpt family architecture which is nothing but your decoder architecture okay because most of the llms or almost any llm which is there in the market right now is decoder family model so i think it is very important that you need to know how a decoder family model works so once you get the hang of that we'll be moving on with position encoding where we'll see about the theory about position encoding what are all the types of position encoding along with that we'll try to code those types and understand its working mathematically similar thing will happen in day six with attention and in day seven we'll move we'll be moving on with the other components for example feed forward network or your projection what are all the components which are left other than attention even layer normalization all of those with types theory code everything will be covered in day seven so if you see clearly by day seven you have an overall idea about or even in-depth idea about the components which are involved in an llm and how an llm works you will have a brief idea or even an in-depth idea if you know uh, you research more and you understand in depth of what i'm saying about so once that is done once you know your LLM, the next step would be to pre-train the LLM. So we'll start with pre-training pipeline explanation in the second week where I'll be explaining about the whole pre-training pipeline based on the LAMA 3 paper which was released and that is considered to be the state of that model right now and we'll be following you know uh, that pipeline uh, of pre-training and we'll collect some data in open source 
and also i'll also show you how you can get other type of data if you want you can also generate data all of these will be covered as a data collection phase and those will be covered in day eight and at the end of day nine you will have an idea about how you need to process your data for pre-training and also how you can create your own pytorch data set and data loader for this pre-training uh, procedure okay so at the end of day 10 you are ready with your llama architecture okay which is already there what you will do is you'll try to understand the llama architecture along with me where we'll be having gpt paper at the side and with that gpt paper we'll try to compare the llama 3 architecture and then we'll try to understand how llama 3 basically works okay so that is about the first 10 days in the course i hope you all like the syllabus i'm trying to frame here so if you have any more thoughts you can let me know in the comment section i'll be more than happy to take all of those and try to include you know inside the pipeline somewhere based on the topic you specify all right so and also here you can see uh, this kind of content no one provides in youtube and rarely few paid content are there even you know like which will cover all of these so i'm trying to give the best content all i require is you guys to just hit the subscribe button hit the like button if you all like this content alone and why you need to subscribe because every day or even two days once video will come you need to get the notification so please do that and also please share it with your friends and family and community and also let me know your thoughts in the comment section that is always welcome be it positive or negative if it is negative i'll take it as a constructive criticism and if it is positive i'll try to keep on working on that to make this thing better okay so at day 11 what we'll do is we'll make a miniature version of the llama 3 which we studied in day 10 and that will be part one because it will be huge uh thing for us to do because this will be live coding okay um though it will be a recorded video being uploaded i'll code it live and then you'll be able to see it okay so part one and part two will happen and in the 13th uh, day what we'll do is once the llm is ready here you can see right in theory first we understood the components we saw the pipeline explanation so similar thing will happen first year llm is ready the pre-training pipeline is already known so we'll code that pre-training pipeline and then we'll try to pre-train the model okay and if time permits we'll also see in detail about the decoding strategies be it uh greedy decoding or beam search there is sampling like new uh, p sampling k sam uh, nucleus sampling okay so there are uh, nucleus sampling top p top k basically so those samplings are there uh, for us to see about in generation uh, you need to know about max tokens you need to know about temperature how it works so there are lots of things to cover other than just llm and all of those will be covered in day 13 in day 14 what we'll do is once you get an introduction to the strategies we'll be going through each of the strategies in detail along with coding so that you understand basically how it works so you can see uh, that approximately at the end of day 14 you know how to pre-train your llm because you know if time permits i'll add this year and evaluation of mini llama itself will come at day 14 which means your pre-training pipeline will be completed at the end of second week and in the third week we'll start with um you know fine-tuning procedure because once your pre-training is completed you need to fine-tune so first what we'll do is the model which we trained from scratch will be fine-tuned for text classification okay so that is one of the simple use case so we'll try to do that and once that is done you have an idea okay like okay this is how uh, pre-training and fine-tuning works but that is not the real world right in real world we usually use other models for our use cases so what i'll do is in 17th day i'll try to explain you about the post pre-training pipeline so what happens after pre-training that pipeline will be explained in detail along with that i'll be moving on with explaining the instruction tuning part which is also known as supervised fine tuning in short sft 
so once that is done we will try to uh, understand the data format how basically uh, instruction tuning happens so that data format is very important we'll see about all of those in 17 in day 18 what we'll do is we'll start with the instruction tuning because in post pre training there are lots of components like supervised fine tuning preference alignment rejection sampling and there are some other components as well like quantization distillation everything is there so we are not going to uh, go through everything in one session because each needs to be covered in single session or even two to three sessions. So we started with an introduction. We'll go in detail with supervised fine tuning first. Okay. And in that session, we'll try to see how you can collect data, how you can process data, how you can train the model for the use case you chosen and collected and processes your data okay basically that and also i'll show you how you can generate synthetic data in here okay so that will be about instruction tuning but there is one problem with instruction tuning which is you know uh while fine tuning your model has a problem known as catastrophic forgetting we'll be seeing about that in detail when i'm going to explain about why you need to fine tune your llms with lora there are some advantages for you to fine tune with LoRa and one of the major advantage would be that you will avoid the catastrophic forgetting. So we'll be seeing about uh, those there, but more, more of theory. Okay. So once that is done, we'll be fine tuning a model with the help of LoRa on a custom use case data you collected here. Okay. These were theory, these two are theory, and this is a practical session. So at the end of day 21, here you can see third weekend. Okay. You'll uh try to understand the LLM evaluation theory and code. So now you'll wonder, okay, here already you said about something like uh, perplexity. See, perplexity is something which is used only while pre-training, but with fine-tuning, you need to write your own evaluation pipeline or even uh, there are some other things you need to consider. All of those will be covered in detail in day 21. And at the end of day 21, you will know how to fine tune a model of your own for your custom use case. So once that is done, we'll be moving on to the advanced sections because till now it is intermediate. Now it is going to be advanced. You will be starting with preference alignment. It will, it is not always possible that your LLM will obey you and respond in the format you want. So for it to align to your preferences, there is a method known as direct preference optimization, which is an alternative to RLHF, which is used in ChatGPT. We'll be seeing about that method in uh, from scratch. And also we'll try to fine tune a hugging face model with DPO. Okay, so that will be your day 22 and in day 23, I'll be covering quantization completely where I'll be covering about what is quantization, types of quantization which is available in, uh, you know, usage right now and how you can export your model quantized, how you can, uh, you know, efficiently quantize your model. There are lots of things and all of those will be covered in day 23 along with KV caching because KV caching is a concept which is used in LLMs very widely in every state of the art LLMs mostly it is used and we'll cover that also in detail in day 23 and day 24 we'll be moving on with distillation and pruning why is this <coughs> you see the LLMs are pretty huge always but that size LLMs are not always you know usable with production if you're working in a production environment so what usually in industry will do is we'll try to distill uh like, like first we'll prune the model and then we'll distill and train the model so that we'll come to a performance closer to the larger model with very small model okay so that is distillation and pruning methods in a gist but we'll be seeing about that in detail along with some coding also there okay so and at day 25 now you have an idea of how you will basically you know efficiently uh, use your models because till now in day 22 you'll be focusing on your performance but in deployment scenarios you need to you know compromise a bit or you can put it as a technical name in trade-off with size being reduced will be increasing the speed okay so those two will be there in 23 and 24 since you have an overall idea about performance and uh, uh, latency trade-off and all 
i think you will be ready for deployment and also we'll be moving on with deployment and serving of your llms um so for that i have allocated day 25 where we'll see only with local okay open source everything will be open source we are not going to use any uh, you know apis here <coughs> basically because there is nothing to learn with apis actually now that you know how to deploy your llm which means you are almost ready for your use cases okay but what if you face some issues and still you want to increase the performance or you want to like you know update your model there are a lot of other things which comes into the picture with llm issues and that is why i have allocated the last week like that okay so moe theory and code focuses on make, making mixture of experts basically it will be used when you are uh training for multitask multi language and so on and so forth and model merging also comes into the same umbrella where you'll train di train different models and you'll merge all of those into a single model so there will be a trade off here when you are doing model merging but it is easier to train okay um we'll be seeing the theory and code behind all of uh, these two and at day 28 uh, we'll be seeing about the theory of rag how basically rag works why it works when we should use that and we'll code it from scratch and then we'll also make a real time app with deployment and that is for day 28 but if you want more detailed course on rag i have already made a 5 hour course on rag you can just check it out okay at day 29 i'll may make a video on agents basically everything related to agents what are the frameworks available how agent works what are the types of agents and we'll try to make a simple agent where we'll even deploy it so that you'll understand basically how agent works we'll also cover monitoring and all there which goes without saying when we say deployment so that is your day 29 and in day 30 i'll say what are the next steps for you all and what you can do here after so that would be the conclusion of the course right now all right but if you let me know something which is valuable to add inside this course i'll be more than happy enough to add this uh, or add what you guys say basically and then we'll you know restructure the course and then i'll put a syllabus when i'm ready with day 0 okay so you have i guess around a week because i'll be pre preparing for the course in in another week we'll start the course so till then you can try to you know put what are the contents you want in this course okay so that will be uh, the course and the next steps basically i'll say how you can advance yourself there is multi modality speech vision and uh, there is a uh, lot of other things which you can try to do uh, and i'll cover all of those in next steps okay So yeah guys I hope you all like this video please if you all like this video please hit the like button share it with your friends it is free for you but uh you can also undo it anytime if you want you can also dislike the video that is completely free, uh, fine uh to show your ex feelings like you know it is to express your feelings to me or rather than feelings the better way to put is sentiment all right also let me know your thoughts in the comment section um and yeah I'll see you all in the next video until then happy learning